Now let us look into the equations to determine the friction and wobble loss for the post tension member. You know that post tension member involves casting of the concrete before the stressing of the tendons. Normally, tattings are prepared within the concrete sections for the insertions of the tendon after casting and the tendons are being stressed in order to induce pre-stressing load onto the member. The tattings are normally arranged in the curvature manner with the adjusted eccentricity along the span of the member in order to maximize the efficiency of the pre-stressing load. This curvature profile is assumed to be a part of a circular shape of an imaginary radius of the circle. For example, this is the curvature of the tendon in the pre-stressed member. It is assumed that this is a part of the circular section with an imaginary radius that forms this curvature and because of the pre-stressing of the tendon within the ducting there will be contact between the tendons and the duct this will lead to frictions and wobble effects between the tendons and the ducts and therefore this will lead to the losses due to the frictions and wobble the equations to predict the friction loss and the wobble are given here, which is in the functions of P1, the pre-stressing load, and also the coefficients of friction mu. These coefficients of friction can be referred from the table here, depending on the conditions. If the tendons feel half of the duct, the mu will be considered as 0 0.19. In the case that mechanisms is being used to reduce the effects of the friction, for example, the unbonded tendon grease inside an extruded plastic shelf, the coefficients of friction can be reduced to 0 0.06. And within the function here, there is theta, k and x. The k here is a constant number which is assumed to be 0 0.008 per meter. And the x here represents the total length of the tendon, which in this case is defined by x2 minus x1, representing the locations of the tendon. It can be more easily understood that the X will be referring to the starting and ending of the tendon profile, which for simply supported beam, it is equals to L. As for the data here, it is referring to the gradient of the tendon profile. The data here will be data 2 minus data 1, which are the angles of the tendon's profile here. Data 1 represents the gradients of the tendon profile at the early stage, while data 2 represents the gradients of the tendon profile at the later stage. Assuming the gradient in this direction is positive, the gradient of the data 2 will be positive and gradient for data 1 will be equals to negative. So when data 2 is to be minus data 1, the differences in terms of the gradient will be amplified, which ultimately will be equal to the gradients of this data 2 plus data 1. In the case that the straight tendon is being used, both data 2 and data 1 will be equal to 0 and this will result in 0 angle here and the losses will be solely due to this kx. In order for you to determine the data, you may use these equations. 
which is in the functions of the length of the beam and also the locations of the gradients to be measured. For theta 2, we take this as S x2. As for theta 1, we take this as x1. There is a theta here. This represents the amplitude of the curvature profile which is represented by the ultimate eccentricity at the midspend. It is more precisely measured as the eccentricity at the midspend minus the eccentricity at the end span. It is actually measuring this distance. The deeper of this amplitude, the larger the gradient here, and it will lead to higher degree of friction and wobble loss. Substitute all the relevant value. You are able to determine the loss due to the friction and wobble.